Good morning and welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. It is Tuesday. We are remembering our Queen. Uh, we will be doing so all week until Monday of next week when the funeral takes place. We will be bringing you all of that, of course, as well, uh, right here on the only place where you get common sense and you get the truth. What you don't get is propaganda. And we're going to be talking this morning about propaganda and the truth because we're going to be talking an awful lot about free speech. Many people think that others have a right to free speech. I'm one of those. I believe people have a right to free speech, but I also have a, a belief that people have a responsibility to use that free speech wisely, not to use it with malice of forethought, and quite frankly, to be decent about it. I know that there are those absolutists who will say, you should be able to say anything you like, any time you like, to anyone. But of course, you can't, can you? Interesting that I've got from Dean in Oxford a great tweet which I will read to you because I think this sums up the feelings of an awful lot of people. Julie Hartley Brewers has been telling us all how of course you should have the right to uh, protest particularly outside Parliament. Well yes you should and you should have the right to hold up placards outside Parliament and I'm in total agreement with that but what you shouldn't be doing is heckling people who are mourning their mother or mourning their grandmother heckling people who are walking behind the coffin of their dead mother and holding up signs which are deliberately designed to breach all kinds of public decency and just to offend. Good morning, Mike, says Dean. These are obviously lefties shouting at the Queen's demise. They've been wallowing in the censorship they've imposed on the vast majority of us on social media for the last few years. Now they're whining about exactly the same thing. They seem to have much glee in. You can't have it both ways. It's come back to bite them on the backside. I think that pretty much sums it up. William Clouston is here from the SDP. William, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Welcome. Um, it's a very historic week, this. There's lots to talk about. Mm. Let's kick things off, though, first of all, with the free speech absolutists, as I call mm. them. Mm. And I bear no ill will to them, by the way, because that's what free speech is about as well. You can have an opinion, and you can certainly have an opinion in this radio station, in this television station, on this channel, but you may well find that it is robustly debated, and that's what we do. And I think, William, that um, those who say... It's fine. Of course they should be able to hold up placards that say nothing. Of course they should be able to hold up placards that say horrible things. I don't agree. I don't agree on this particular week, in mm. this particular instance, in the case of uh, a family mourning mm. their queen <coughs> and our sovereign, let's face it, and our mm. head of state, mm. I don't think they should be allowed to do it. No, I think that's a perfectly legitimate point of view. Um, I think every single incident of this type is different, actually. I think what happened at the funeral cortege was absolutely disgusting. Mm. And you could easily make a case, a very strong case, that the person uh, should have been arrested. I can see that totally. And I think, you know, in fact, the person probably uh, got arrested for his own sake because mm. what would have happened to him? Yeah. Disgusting event. And I can see a case that you could breach a law. You could breach uh, the peace yeah. doing that. So I can see that totally. I'm not an absolute in that sense. But on the other hand, you have people holding signs up that get arrested. I'm not really in favour of that. I think, in general, every single situation is different mm. so i think and anyone actually that says it's absolutely this under any circumstances or absolutely that is missing the mm. point actually. No, I, think very nuanced. I think that's right but also <coughs> i mean i liken it to um i don't name them particularly but liverpool and manchester united fans have a particular uh, enmity towards each yeah. other uh, they sing particularly horrible songs around each rangers other and celtic rangers and celtic yeah. the same mm. um you know i've often said this when i've been doing shows on talk sport I really would rather that didn't happen. Mm. I would really rather that they didn't sing songs about the Munich mm. Air disaster mm. or about Hillsborough. Mm. I'd rather that didn't happen. Mm. But it does happen. Mm. And if it does happen, I think those who do it should mm. be punished. And the football authorities seem to agree. They're yeah. just not very good at policing it. But effectively, that is an attack on free speech in the same way that this is. One of the problems that we've got in this country is that uh, free speech isn't dealt with fairly. So if you say something against one of the things... If you say anything against Marcus Rashford, for instance, yeah. which a, a, a person did, and he was wrong to do yeah. so, obviously, you'll end up in jail. Or Meghan you Markle. You can't you criticize can end, Meghan Markle you can end up because you're a racist. Yeah, and if, but if you hurl abuse at the royal family for months on end mm. online, very little will happen. Yeah. And again, we have a de facto uh, blasphemy law in this country. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, if you don't like... You can't go around film, insulting um, Muhammad, can no, you? No, no, you can't. And, and you have a de facto, and there's a teacher in Batley, there's still, we still don't know where he's he is. He's in hiding for his yeah, life. So, so actually, all of these things are very difficult. Perhaps one of the things, one of the curious things is that we've imported a lot of American values. Mm. All these, uh, you know, the progressive uh, values of, 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 of wokery. But we haven't actually... So someone get cancelled or taken down or lose their livelihood or living quite easily. Uh, but we have no law actually protecting free speech itself. No. So we're in this odd situation where 
if you say something against uh, something which is a new a new religion, you'll get hammered. Well, how about if, people losing their jobs because they've said a woman is a woman? Yeah, exactly. A woman has a cervix. People have lost their job over that. They have. No, and this is the problem. Now, if, you, if we had a, a First Amendment, a type of First Amendment in this country that guaranteed what you could say, at least we'd have consistency. Mm. One of the problems is it's not consistent, and people can see that, and until it is... I don't think you'll get consistency until you get proper legal... No. Uh, Representation. And I think also, as I said, it may well be, and I'm not suggesting for a moment that the police are this forward-thinking and brilliant, mm. but, you know, it may well be that people will look at what happened yesterday in the various instances where it happened in mm. London, outside Parliament, and also mm. in uh, Edinburgh, and people who are going to do that kind of thing might mm. think twice and might go, oh, blimey, I don't think I want to be arrested, so I actually maybe I won't shout anything out. Yeah, and that's that would have a chilling effect on free speech in general. I think we're big enough. A lot of the time, the, the, the crowd... The society is big enough to take what these idiots say and move mm. on, ignore them if possible. But I think I agree with you. I think Sha you know certainly what that young man did uh, in Edinburgh mm. is that probably goes against. I mean, you can be, you've got to be some it's sort in, of absolute it's free decent. speech. No, you know, it's totally. And the indecent. people, you see, the trouble is we have sort of Twitterized the real world as well mm. because mm. the real world now uh, seems to sort of ape what happens on Twitter because mm. on Twitter people would say. Of course he's allowed to say that about Prince Andrew, because look at what Prince Andrew's done. No, not that he's been found guilty of anything, and I'm not defending Prince Andrew, but that's not what you it's, do. It's, it's other members of his family yeah. there, it, utterly indecent. Right. And, and actually anyone, I mean, you can't, there, are, there are no, in philosophy, there are no true uh, free speech purists. The famous case of shouting fire in a yeah. cinema. Obviously, you can't say that. No, of course Obviously not. Obviously, you can't. So there are limits. Mm. I wish people would be more nuanced about it. I, I genuinely, Mike, when I saw that, when I saw the woman with the placard, I, I sort of think, is is that necessary? And then I realised that, of course, Scotland has a different set of rules mm. than we have on some of these things. Yeah. And actually, she may well have breached the law. So you, it's harder to criticise right. the police. But again, the police. Uh, are implementing the law mm. for do different people. We saw that in COVID. Yeah. If you wanted to organise a BLM march in COVID times, fine, yeah, there's, there's nothing to see. That was OK. It's, that was OK. But if you wanted to do an anti-vax march... You can't. ...or, you know, some get kind of anti-lockdown march, you not only get arrested, but you get given a good hiding. Exactly, and that's precisely the point I'm making. Yeah. You know, whatever view you have on this, right. you've got to be consistent. We're not consistent. We're not consistent. I mean, look at, for example, that incident, I can't remember if it was this year or last year, in North London, where the Islamists were driving through Golders Green. Yes shouting about how they're going to kill Jews yeah. and rape their children, all this. Now, they were arrested finally. Which, I think they rightly. were finally caught. Quite rightly. But, you know, were they exercising their free speech? Surely they were. According to no. the people who think that this bloke should be able to shout at Andrew... No, that's incitement. Then, well, it's a, it, it, yeah, I think I think they were right to be arrested, and that's of that's, course they were. So that's right. But what I'm saying is, is there are plenty of instances mm. to say that just because you've said something, you're not protected by free speech because yeah. you've said something which might be incitement to violence or mm. it might be against the law. You, you could easily argue that shouting at a member of the royal family yeah. um, is a breach of the peace. Easy. You could easily argue that no, it's incitement that. to violence because you're actually inviting people to beat the hell out of you for being mm. such a scumbag. Mm. No, I can see that. Yeah. I, 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 t I think you've got to take a nuanced view on it. But I, as I say, a, a codified First Amendment might help us in this case. Uh, where we're going is not, is not working, I think. No, it really isn't. Let's talk about the week so far, generally speaking. Um, Day one of the Queen lying in state will be tomorrow. Mm. I don't think anyone can imagine quite how many millions of people are going to come to London if they're not here already yeah. to just walk past the coffin. We're seeing it in St Giles already today up in mm. Edinburgh. Mm. People are queuing up for hours and hours on end. People mm. are being told they might have to wait for 25 to 30 hours to yeah, see the coffin and they'll still do it. They'll still do that because the commitment is there. Mm. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing time actually, a very sad time for the country, but you do, it does allow reflection and what I see is the country sort of rallying round, you know, it closes ranks in the, at these times. And actually, uh, you, you do at these times also find out who your friends are. Mm. Um, and I, you know, it's, a, it's a, I mean, a, a, an incredible monarch. I, one of the things that I draw from it is just how we, looking at her life, how many of us could and should actually emulate her in terms of what her values are. Mm. We hear, we d we've just been talking about it, <clears throat> we hear so much nowadays about rights, my rights. Mm. Rights, rights, rights. Mm. And we don't talk about duty or obligation enough. And no. it just is, it's been, actually, the interregnum in talking about normal politics that we've had has been very good for us. Yeah. You actually look at her life and, and, and ask yourself, what could you learn from mm. it? So much you could learn from yeah. it. Yeah. And the fact that she was able to operate in almost any situation, um, 
talk to almost anyone. Mm. I mean, I say almost just because I'm, I'm in case there's something that, that she didn't do, but I, don't, mm. I can't imagine an no. instance where she didn't actually master the situation. Astonishing. And just talk to whoever was in front of her, whether it be a little child from a school mm. uh, or an injured serviceman yeah. uh, or a yeah. foreign dignitary yeah. or even a dictator from yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yes. I mean, you know, she did yeah. the lot. Well, and diplomacy was astonishing. Yeah. I mean, you know, the wisdom and diplomacy actually just to see through the changes when you think about it. I mean, if you're in 1952, imagine, Mike, and you think ahead 70 years. Imagine you're in, you're in 52 and you go back 70 years. You're in, you know, the late Victorian era. It's a, it's a, the changes mm. that she saw were absolutely phenomenal, and you have to be wise and diplomatic to, to usher in all that change, mm. really. No, I, I'm, I'm just full of awe. I think it's taught us a lot about the value of whatever your view on monarchy is. I'm, I'm, a, I'm pro mm. monarchy, constitutional monarchy, but it does, it shows you that it's capable of creating unity mm. as a thing. You look at the division, I mean, it's been in, very interesting. I talk about, you know, finding out who your friends are. Uh, some American commentators, you know, that, that, that pipe up now at this time, which isn't decent talking about reparations mm. or, you know, criticising the monarchy at this time. Just, just, you know, it's a moment of grief, actually. Yeah. But if they want to talk about it, then you have to raise the issue of, can you look up to a head of state? It's a very, very important question. We yeah. actually, if a constitutional monarchy is working correctly, you can. And yeah. She's pr proved that. Whatever your view, you could, Republicans can look up to, could look up to the Her, Her Majesty. You could do it. Mm. Uh, I mean, the Americans claim, don't they, that they have um, respect for the oath of office of the President of the United <coughs> States. Well, they didn't have it when Donald Trump was in there. No. Uh, they could pretend that they were only attacking Donald Trump, but they were attacking the office of the presidency. Yes. So they're wrong about that. Yeah. And if they want to talk about reparations, maybe they should look a little bit to the West, mm. uh, where there's quite a few uh, Native American reservations where yeah. people are still effectively ghettoized yeah. and live in a precluded side of land yeah. where only Native Americans live. But I'm, I'm right? talking more, even, even more broadly than that, Mike, just about, about can you look up to your head of state most a lot of the societies in the west are very very divided you know half the country in the states couldn't look uh, up to trump half can't look mm. look up to biden it's impossible yeah. actually the the genius of a constitutional monarchy is that it that you, your head of state if it's the right one can bind people together and create a sense mm. of unity in the nation and that's what she did mm. incredible achievement absolutely right as i've said many times already this week uh, you've got a situation where king charles the third has taken over uh, and in a way which I think many of us have been quite surprised about, because I think mm. many of us didn't expect him to be uh, very good at it. Mm. But in fact, he is really good at it. And so that's where we find ourselves now. I've and we find ourselves, we're going to be watching him today, he's going to go to Northern Ireland, mm. he's been in Scotland, obviously he'll go mm. to Wales. Mm. I think people have had a genuine outbreaking of, of affection for him. Mm. Well, I, I, I've been very impressed. I, I think um, you don't know what any leader will be like until... But I, I've been very impressed with him. I think he's, he's made a good start. The quality of the speeches, Mike, have been incredible. Yeah, they really have. Uh, we'll take a short break. We're talking to William Clouston from the SDP. And we want to hear your calls on this because, look, I'm saying what I'm saying because I believe it. I'm saying what I'm saying because it's what I think is the right thing to do. You may have a different opinion and you can argue with that. And you can say to me what you think is wrong about what I'm saying. But I don't think that these people who are being arrested should have expected anything less, quite frankly because of what they did. 0344 499 1000. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. People have asked me actually this week, is this still an independent republic given uh, all the stuff you're spouting about the royals and monarchy? Well, of course it is. You know, this is always an independent republic. Trev says, free speech is free speech, Mike, and we are still in a free country, just. But I agree that shouting abusers should be removed from the scene, but people do have the right in the UK to protest peacefully. Giving it 30 minutes, by the way, if it's all 100% Queen again, I'm switching off. Well, that's your right to do, Trev. Yeah. Um, it's not really about the Queen as such. It's about Britain. It's about how we live. It's about who we are. And William and I have been talking about this this morning. William Cleuston is here from the SDP. You know, if you think this is just about the Queen, you're not really getting it. This is about Britain. I said yesterday, uh, in fact, to, uh, um, uh, to Anne Whittacombe, is this a kind of recalibration of Britain? You know, are we looking at ourselves as if we were somewhere else watching? Mm. And has Britain got something back this week, I wonder? I think it has, yeah. It's got a sense of unity. As I say, people people rally round and close ranks at mm. these times. And you get a sort of sense of the hinterland, don't you? People coming in from far mm. and wide, 
for the lying estate. He, this is what you get. It's, it's, a, it's a tremendous time. I yeah. think and there I, are certainly people in this country who hate it. Yeah. You know, you can tell by mm. the social media accounts that haven't mentioned the fact that the Queen actually died. Mm. And there's some quite significant numbers of people that mm. you would think would say that. But haven't. But most people are decent, Mike. Yeah. I mean, this is what this is what happens at this time. We do come together, and there is a sense of unity. It, it proves one of the points and uh, uh, about constitutional monarchy that we made before. I think the the ritual of it is actually very important. I think the ritual of the whole people are inclined nowadays to think ritual is sort of uh, you know a bit bit old fashioned mm. and not really necessary. Actually, it does. It binds you to the mm. to the to the past. But it's, it has more than that. It has the, the Queen and the new King takes an oath. Mm. Again, I think, I, I'm sort of probably a bit of a traditionalist in this, but, you know, uh, it's the same as getting married. Mm. It, you take an oath. It's very, very... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's also about religion, thing. isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's a lot. I mean, you get a sense very much from Charles's <coughs> first speech mm. um, that he's talking about his faith. He's mm. not just talking about... Mm the many faiths that he used to talk about, he's now talking about his faith, which is yeah. the Church of England. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a sort of reassertion. I know a lot of... I mean, I'm, I'm a church goer. I'm not a believer, but uh, maybe a, some people think that's a contradictory thing. It isn't, actually. But Are you a sort of church-going agnostic? Then? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a believer, but I, 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 I don't like the expression of a cultural Christian. I, I love... Uh, I love For a start, I love the churches mm. where I live, and, uh, and I love the... Uh, for me, it's more about belonging mm. it's not just about belief it's and that's a community it's a community and you you see that so um yeah as part of a, a ritual I, I, i'll go most sundays mm. often on my own yeah. if there isn't a service so that's that's what i do but but we are we, we have lost something major you know society is like a it's like an orphan actually mm. without without religion and and again it's this week we've we've had time just to think about it but the the importance of an oath the importance of a promise. Mm. All of these things, what I've urged people to do is just look at the Queen's life. I mean, I made the point uh, yesterday about, I think, one of the reasons she lived a, a fulfilled and long and happy life was because of the service mm. she did. She, she, you'd never have a, a, a moment in her life when she didn't have that purpose. And a lot of people are looking for purpose. Perhaps some of us should look at, look at what, she, what she did. Yeah, I think look at outwards rather than inwards. And uh, talking of churches, mourners are queuing at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh to pay respects to Queen Elizabeth's coffin as it lies in state before being flown to London uh, later on today. Uh, you can see that on your screens now uh, if you're watching Talk TV. And St. Giles is a particularly beautiful church. I don't know if you've been inside it yeah. in Edinburgh. I mean, yeah. it's astonishingly beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. It really lovely. is. Um, I think there's even a Graham in there somewhere really you know, well, there's a load of um, as you go in there's a load of you know people who are lying yeah. having been you know their remains mm. been put there and i think there's an honor lady on lady graham from some honorable society or other yeah my mother's home city yeah, is that I'm, right? I'm mostly Scots, actually. Yeah. Born. Well, close to the Scottish name. It, it is Orcadian yeah, on my father's side, and, and my mum's at McDonald's, mm. so, yeah. No, I'm yeah. mostly Scots, but... No, it's a fine city, and, and the Royal Mile and the whole thing. It's, it's very, very... Uh, it, again, I think... what I have to say this. I'm not trying to be political, but I think it's it shows the Queen and and Prince Philip's love of Scotland and Charles's love of Scotland also sort of bring, binds us together a bit, and it's a lovely moment. I, I you know, I have a... A house in Orkney. I love Orkney, and I go, you know, regularly. I've got mm. up all my life, mm. uh, and you know, some of my family live across the border. Some of us still live in England, but I, you know, I, I think that's a, a warming experience. It is. I love it. And also, one of the things I think that's been very positive about all of this, and, and you know, sad that the Queen died, but in some ways remarkable that mm. she did die in Scotland, which was her mm. happy place. Yeah. As she called it Balmoral. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of almost emphasising. The Union. It does. And I know that those who like the idea of independence for Scotland say, oh, but the Union's only 300 and odd years old. Well, that's not the point. No. I'm not seeing as nutty as some of the extremist SNP types are, yeah. uh, or the extremist, shall we say, um, uh, separatists are, uh, they haven't been shouting. Well, the, I, th I understand that the p official position of the SNP is to retain the monarchy uh, anyway. So it's, it's, you'd, you've had this overlap in mm. Scots history before. Uh, Orkney and it's Shep just the Tories they hate, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I think that's probably <laughs> different from the SNP membership and some of their voters, probably. But yeah. anyway, I, I've 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 enjoyed the the fact that it's brought us together a little bit. And I could totally understand uh, the Queen mm. loving uh, Balmoral and Aberdeenshire, and uh, as I say, we, it's know, a very beautiful country. But yeah. as I say to people in Scotland, it's all of ours. It's yeah, not just yeah. Scotland; it's Britain. Yeah, you yeah, know, we yeah. live in Britain. That's yeah. what we have as a passport. It's what it says on the passport. Yeah. You can be Scottish yeah. and you can be English, yeah. but you're still British. Exactly. No, I, I, I agree. I think I'm, I'm hoping it'll bring us together, mm. and uh, and I think 
Charles, I think, as I say, the way he started with the quality of the speeches and the way he's uh, composed himself, I, I'm very impressed. Mm. So he's a very thoughtful fellow. Obviously, some of his thoughts aren't to everyone's liking. Well, I was going to say, I yeah. was going to ask you about that, because he's <clears throat> maintaining at the moment that basically his personal views, which, which we know, because mm. we never knew much about the Queen's personal views, mm. but we know that Charles has a particular set of views and beliefs mm. and all of that. He's mm. written about them. He's, he's written letters to cabinet ministers and all of that. He says that will not affect his... Um, uh, his time as king. Do you believe that? I think it'll be very difficult for him. I mean, a lot of his views on architecture or the environment or the seas or whatever, uh, are, and even on religion, are uh, a matter of public record now. So, you know, many of his views are out there. Mm. And actually, uh, some of his views on the environment and some of his views on architecture I, I probably have sympathy with. But I think there is, there is there's a, certainly an interview where he said, you know, I will pivot, I will mm. change. Uh, and I think he, he, he must, yeah. to some extent. I expect it'll be something in the middle, actually. Yeah, I think so. A couple more uh, texts for you from Maddie. Mike, I totally agree with you. No one is denying the right to free speech, but come on, it's common decency. There is a time and a place that left her an utter embarrassment to all of us with their behaviour. And Grace says, uh, we have no qualms about the act of protesting, but for the sake of decency and respect for the royal family, bereaving the death of their mother, it is not the time or place to shout and protest in their moment of grief. And I think that's, well, that sums it up, doesn't it? It does. And also, Mike, remember this, that you can, prote you can protest, you can make a point in a decent way. Mm. And that didn't take place no. in that. Which brings us back, I suppose, full circle to the people holding up blank pieces of paper. Um, and being arrested for that. And mm. maybe if they're holding up a blank piece of paper and saying nothing, that's OK. Well, the, the people are testing I still it, rather they? They I wouldn't think a do lot, it. A lot of this is performative. They're just trying to be clever, aren't you they? You know what? A lot of this is performative It's like, stuff. just go home. If you're yeah. trying to be clever, just go home and don't watch it. How much of this, Mike, is happening because people have their own little TV channel, it's called Twitter? Yeah. They, they yeah. do these things, it's performative, they do it, and yeah. they get a little bit I've of I've got attention. a YouTube channel. It's hey, look people at this. have watched yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, it doesn't represent that. It doesn't no represent, and it's a tiny, tiny, mm. tiny minority it of is. people. Most people are it decent. Is. Most people are decent, and you're one of them. So am I. Uh, but we can argue about it all day if you like. This is Talk TV.